Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll be adding a second drive to the 2012 Mac Mini using the OWC SSD Data Doubler Kit. We've already shut down, unplugged, and have placed the Mini on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to flip the Mac Mini over. Rotate the bottom cover counterclockwise until the two white dots are aligned. You can then gently lift the cover off using your nylon pry tool if necessary. First, we need to remove the memory modules. To do this, gently pull outward on the retaining clips until the top module pops up. Then, gently pull it straight out. Repeat the process for the lower module. Next, use your Torx T6 screwdriver to loosen these three screws that hold the fan in place. Once you've done that, gently lift the fan up and to the side to reveal the fan connector. Use your nylon pry tool to gently lift up on the connector and detach it from the logic board. Be careful to lift up on just the connector and not the socket that it's in. You can now set the fan aside. Next, remove these three 2mm hex screws. If you don't have a hex wrench, you can use your Torx T8 instead. If you do, use a light touch to avoid stripping the screws. You can now remove these two Torx T8 screws. Gently lift the antenna grate up and slide it out off to the side. This black cable goes to the airport antenna, which we'll need to disconnect. The airport cable is attached underneath this flap. Lift the flap and gently lift the connector free. You can then set the antenna grate aside. Detach this screw near the back of the Mac Mini Then gently slide the cowling out and set it aside. Then, remove this screw near the rear of the logic board with your Torx T6 screwdriver. Next, use your nylon pry tool to gently lift the SATA connector up and out of its socket. Insert your logic board removal tool into these two holes. Then, gently pull back on the tool to slide the logic board just slightly towards the back of the Mini. That will give you just enough room to disconnect the IR cable connector from the logic board. You can then lift up on the IR cable gently with your nylon pry tool to detach it. Pull back on the logic board a little bit further and you'll have enough room to disconnect the power supply cable. You should then be able to remove the logic board completely. You can now reach in and pull the hard drive out of the Mini and set it aside. Next, remove these two Torx T6 screws which hold the power supply and drive bracket in place. Slide the small retaining clip out from under the socket. Then rotate the power socket itself 90 degrees counterclockwise. You can then slide the power supply out of the Mini. Once you've done that, you can lift the carrier up and out of the Mini, being careful not to damage the IR sensor board in the process. We can now move on to installing the new drive in the carrier. There are four rubber grommets that come with the Data Doubler kit. Insert these grommets into these four holes in the carrier. Next, attach the SATA ribbon cable that came with your kit to your new drive. Once attached, you can then gently fold the ribbon cable down so that it lays flat along the drive. 
Position the drive so that the SATA cable is on top and on the opposite side of the bracket from the IR sensor cable and slide it into place. Then, use the four Torx T8 screws that came with the kit to secure the drive. Once you've attached the drive, slide the carrier unit back into the Mac Mini, making sure to line up the holes in the carrier with its receptacles on the Mini's case. We can now slide the power supply back into place, making sure that this tab on the end slides into this slot in the case. You can now secure the carrier and power supply using the Torx T6 screws that held them in earlier. Place the power socket back into the unit and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Then slide the retainer clip back in to hold it in place. You can now slide the logic board about two thirds of the way back into the Mini. Line up the power cable and push the logic board forward until you can plug the two together. Then slide the logic board forward a little more and you can reattach the IR sensor cable. You can now slide the logic board all the way in, pushing along the rear edge if necessary. Replace the original drive back into the Mini. The two mounting pins on the drive will need to go into these two grommets. To help seat the drive, slide a business card so that it sits along the ridge that holds the drive. Then, slide the original drive back into place. It may take a little maneuvering to seat the drive correctly. Once the drive is seated, you can then remove the business card. Next, connect the SATA cables by lining them up over their respective slots on the logic board and gently snapping them into place. Then, slide the cowling back into place and reattach the lower screw holding it in. To reattach the connector on the airport antenna to the connector on the board, simply pull the cover back Line the connectors up and press them together. You can then replace the cover. Slide the antenna grate back into place and maneuver it so it sits flush. Then reattach the two Torx T8 screws that hold the hard drive to the grate. You can now reattach the three hex screws around the edge. If you're using your Torx T8 screwdriver to do this, you need to be extremely careful not to tighten them too hard or you'll strip the screws. You can now replace the Torx T6 screw near the rear of the logic board. Finally, reattach the fan cable to its connector on the logic board Set the fan into place and tighten the three torque screws that hold it in. You may now replace the memory. The notch on the memory modules line up with the pins in the memory slots. Place the first module into the lower slot at about a 40 degree angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. Put the bottom cover onto the Mini, making sure that both the white dots line up. Then rotate the bottom cover clockwise until the black and white dots are aligned. You may now flip your Mac Mini over, hook it back up, and turn it on.